Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for October 15th, 2020. It's Thursday, and that is Home Lab Thursday. And what am I going to be talking about? Well, I was originally going to talk about home networking, but you know what? Mm, something came up in the meantime, which is being able to run ESXi on an ARM-based processor. The official fling is available, and you can now run ESXi on a Raspberry Pi. So that really grabbed my attention. I was like, well, I guess that's what I have to talk about this week. So I have a whole demo prepped to show you the process of getting it installed on your Raspberry Pi. If you want to follow along, I'll give you the information in a moment. But first, I want to check in with you. How you doing? Happy Thursday. What's going on? Things going okay in your neck of the woods? Did you happen to catch some of the HashiConf stuff that came out? Two new product launches. One I talked about yesterday, which was all about this product called Boundary, which is secure access management. And now today they announced Waypoint, which is sort of a CI CD tool. Now, given the fact that I mostly work on infrastructure, the first one's a little more exciting for me, but I'm curious, what's more exciting for you? Let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. I hope you've caught some of the announcements. And now let's talk about getting that uh, Raspberry Pi with some ESXi. So what are you going to need to do if you want to do this installation? Well, obviously you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. And look at that. Oh, I got a whole stack of Raspberry Pis here. Now, what's the bad news about these Raspberry Pis? Well, they are Raspberry Pi 4s, which is what you need. Can't be a three or a two. And you need at least four gig of memory. Well, that's good news. These are all four gig of memory Raspberry Pis. The bad news is they really recommend eight gig if you want to run anything beyond the hypervisor in like one VM. So wah, wah, that's the sad news. It also is really recommended to have a fan on here because it's going to make your Raspberry Pi kind of hot. So make sure you have a fan and you have a Raspberry Pi 4. At least 4 gig recommended is 8 gig. What else do you need to run this all, to put this all together? You're going to need a micro SD card, which you probably already have one of these. The actual installer and ESXi itself require a UEFI boot. So you have to prepare this SD card with special firmware that was written by VMware that enables UEFI boot on a Raspberry Pi, because that's not, a, not what it does by default. You're also going to need some sort of USB 3 mass storage device. Now, I just have a simple 16 gig thumb drive that I can install ESXi on, and I can also use it to boot the ISO installer because it can kind of do both, but you're probably going to want something a little more performant if you're going to be using virtual machines. So they recommend you get an NVMe2 drive with a USB 3 enclosure. Anything else that you need? Well, I guess that's really it. You're going to need some sort of network connection, which you probably already have anyway for the Raspberry Pi, and you're going to need the bits and the instructions to do it. So let me share out my screen real quick. A boom. This is the official fling page for ESXi ARM edition. And a couple things to note here, you do have to agree to the technical preview license. And if you go to download the ISO, you're going to need a my VMware account. That's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Another thing to note, because this isn't really obvious, or at least it wasn't obvious to me, this little drop down is where you find all the documentation for this fling. So it's not posted anywhere else. I racked my brain and searched all over the internet trying to find this documentation. And the whole time it was right there, right below the ISO download. So before you download the ISO, just go ahead and download the documentation for whichever device you're doing and then download the ISO. So that uh, hopefully is everything that you're gonna need if you wanna follow along, if you wanna get this whole thing going. Now let's switch over to the demo and I'll walk you through it. All right, here we go. I've downloaded the necessary files to prep my SD card. So the first thing I have to do is format that SD card. You wanna make sure you're doing FAT32 and not NTFS regardless of the size. Mine's a 32 gig card. And then I named it UEFI for the volume, but you don't really need to do that. Once that's finished, it's gonna go ahead and format that volume. And then we're gonna copy some files over to that micro SD card so it can do the UEFI boot. So first, we're gonna expand this archive of firmware stuff. And once that archive is finished expanding, we're actually gonna remove a few files that are going to be replaced by files that are in that Raspberry Pi UEFI firmware zip file below it. So basically, the folks at VMware 
developed this specialized UEFI firmware that replaces the regular boot firmware. All right, so that's done expanding. I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this other archive while I'm here. Now I'm gonna go into the firmware master. There we go, and go into the boot directory. And in the boot directory, I'm gonna find anything that starts with kernel.img. So those four files or five files there, delete those. All right, those are gone. Now I'm going to go back up a couple directories to that specialized UFBI firmware, copy all of these files, go back up, go into the firmware master, go into the boot and paste them in and overwrite any files. And then I'm going to take all of these files and copy, oh wait, I forgot. I have to update the config.txt file with this special setting because I'm using a four gig and not an eight gig Raspberry Pi 4. So you have to set GPU underscore mem equal to 16. Okay, that's saved. Whew. I don't know what that, I don't know what it would have done, but I don't want it, anything bad to happen. Now I'm gonna copy all of those contents directly to that SD card. You don't have to create a subfolder or anything like that. Just copy them straight to the root of that SD card. Once that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that SD card out. And now I'm going to use Rufus to image my USB 3 stick. So basically I have this data traveler 16 gig USB stick. I am going to image it with the ISO that actually boots the installer for ESXi. All right, once you're ready, you put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, you boot it and hit escape a bunch of times to get into this menu. What we're doing here is we're gonna go into Raspberry Pi configuration go into advanced configuration and change the limit RAM to three gig to disabled because we want to use all of the RAM that's available. Well, we're going to have to save that change back out and then reboot the device. When the device reboots, we're going to hit escape a whole bunch of times to get out of that additional boot screen into this, this regular screen. All right, we're back at this regular screen and I'm going to go into the boot record and what I'm doing here is I'm booting from that USB drive that has the ESXi installer ISO. Okay, so as you can see, it's loading. This actually takes a while, so I'm speeding this way up. I think it took like maybe three minutes for it to boot this installer. But there we go, we're at the standard ESXi installer. So I'll hit enter to proceed, hit F11 to accept the EULA. It's gonna scan for devices it can use to install. It's gonna find the device that it booted from. I'm gonna select that for now, but you could plug in a separate USB 3.0 device, go through and set the root password and the language like you normally would. And fortunately, I actually typed the password right the first time. And then it's gonna go through the process of installing ESXi. Now it booted the installer into memory. And then we are overwriting the contents of our USB stick. Now we could plug in a separate USB stick and use that as a data store. So you absolutely have that option here, but basically we've overwritten our installer. There we go, it's installed. I'm gonna hit enter to reboot the system. And then once it reboots, I'm gonna go back into the BIOS and I wanna set the boot options to set the USB stick to be the primary boot option. So right now it would go through all the network cards first. I'm gonna go select my Kingston Data Traveler and bump it up to the top of the list so that it now boots to that device as opposed to trying to pixie boot off of all those network interfaces. All right, so I'm gonna save all of that and back out and hit continue to continue the boot process. It'll boot off that USB stick and start trying to boot ESXi 7.0 Raspberry Pi. So that's what it's doing right now. Again, this also takes a while. I think this took about five minutes to boot, so be patient. And now it grabbed an IP address because I have it plugged into a switch. So we should be able to go over to a browser, type in that IP address, 192.168.1.109. And once we do that, we'll get the standard certificate warning saying, hey, this is not a trusted cert. We can skip through that because we know what we're doing. And now we're at the standard login page. I'll put in the root username and the password that I set. We can see we're on that ESXi fling for ARM. And we can look at stuff like storage. Right now there's no data stores, no virtual machines, and networking is just the VM network and management network using the same interface. And we can see that it is the ESXi on ARM fling. So that's all you need to do to get ESXi installed on a Raspberry Pi.
All right, there we go. That's all you need to do to get ESXi running on a Raspberry Pi. It is just that easy. Not a whole lot of steps there. And then you can just feel free to experiment. And William Lim has been knocking it out of the park with updated posts on different ways to do it because you can boot to iSCSI. You can get rid of that micro SD card if you do some funky hacking. There's, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in this sphere. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. That's all I have for today. Tomorrow is vault certification. So definitely tune in for that. And until tomorrow, stay healthy and stay safe out there. Thanks.